Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Remember the Sabbath day, call the Sabbath delight. This is the Lord's day and the Lord will do for us what the Lord does, feed us, forgive us, help us and heal us. Rejoice at all the wonderful things God is doing. Please stand and join me for the opening hymn. Please be seated. We're going to read Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all our sin and heals us and our diseases. Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfy your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess your sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead, 
instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table when met by those in need. We have too often passed by on the other side. <coughs> Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Now hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but he delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to love God as he loves you. Amen. The grace of the Lord of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, community of the Holy, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And Jim will sing the Kyrie. be seated. We'll listen to the first reading. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 58, starting at verse 9b. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like the watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall, you shall rise up the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and a holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own way, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob. For the month of the Lord, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord, the word of life. The prayer of the day will say together, God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by the great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer for the sake of Jesus' name, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Second reading is from Hebrews 12. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire, a darkness, and gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of the words 
made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For if they could endure the order that was given, if even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in a festive gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not re refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. May remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with a reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord, the word of life. Praise Thanks be to God. Passing the peace in whatever way you make comfortable for you, either with a sign or you go to your neighbor, please limit your greetings to three people and then please return to your seat. We're going to sing the hallelujah. Please stand for the gospel. <clears throat> Today, the gospel comes from Luke, verse 13 to 10 and 17. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid hands on her, immediately she stood straight up straight and began praising the Lord. But the leader of the synagogue, ignorant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work should be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath. But the Lord answered and said, you hypocrites. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give water? And ought not, not the woman, a daughter of Abraham from Satan, uh, bound for 18 long years but set free from this bondage? The crowd was rejoicing at all those wonderful things that the Lord was doing. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'm giving a sermon. <laughs> but it's not that I have written. When I came to the States in 1965, a good friend of mine went to Paris 
and became a nun, and she joined the Sœur Les Sœurs of the Theon sisters and is now still in Paris. So four weeks ago, I said I need something to talk about, but not above my head too much. So when Barbara wrote to me and asked me if I should do this reflection, I was faced with a real challenge. I have not done this kind of reflection for a very long time, but it was on the same day a joy to be asked and a joy to accept that challenge, even if it left me with a feeling of little unsure of myself. Once I decided to say yes, I very quickly chose the theme of the tent of the meeting. And it is a text from Exodus. It is the tent of the meeting which is pitched outside the camp. Why is this? Isn't this the place for meeting with a camp in the midst of people? God has threatened to destroy the people. God does not dwell in this tent meeting. And maybe this is why it is possible here for those who seek the Lord to go to the tent. But what also strikes me is that even Moses does not enter the tent. Rather, God descends in a cloud, and the cloud stands before the entrance of the tent to meet Moses. In the Bible, the cloud is often the symbol of God's presence. When in Exodus 19, God makes the covenant with the people on Mount Sinai. God tells Moses, we'll come in a thick cloud. In this first text, only Moses meets God, and God speaks with Moses face to face as a man speaks with his fellow. And the Hebrew word, which is translated here as fellow, and the same as in Leviticus, you shall love your neighbor, your fellow, as yourself. God speaks directly to Moses. This would be going too far, and it would be disrespectful to say this to God. Moses cannot be God's fellow. God remains the holy other. And yet, there is a communication between God and Moses, and this occurs face to face. And the people know that this communication is happening, and they bow down in adoration. After meeting God in the cloud before the tent, according to Rashi, Moses then returns to the people in the camp and teaches them what he has learned from the Lord. The communication does not stop here. This is for everyone. Moses would take the tent and pitch it outside the camp far away, and he called it the tent of meeting, and it would be that whoever would seek would go to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. And it would be then when Moses would go out to the tent, all the people would rise and they would stand. The cloud covered the tent of the meeting and the glory filled. Moses was not able to come to the tent meeting for the second rested upon it and the glory filled the Misha. Misha means from the Hebrew dwelling. I think Jim, you know that. When the cloud was raised up from the Misham, the children of Israel would journey all their journeys. If the cloud did not rise up, they would not journey until the day it rose and their eyes were all in the house of Israel in all their journeys. The covenant between God and the people of Israel has been renewed. Moses has a new set of tablets with the commandments. In the preceding chapter, Israel has been told how to construct the Ark of the Covenant. The second text begins with the speaking of the tent meeting, but then the tent is called the Mishkan, the dwelling. The relationship between God and the people has been repaired. Reconciliation is now a reality. The cloud covers the tent of the meeting. But of course, the Bible doesn't end here with the book of Exodus. And the final word is not that God dwells in the Misham and approachable glory, even if this dwelling goes with Israel and their journey. When Solomon builds the temple, we again hear of a cloud. 
When the priest came out in the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord. Now God dwells in a house in the midst of his people, and the people have arrived in the land where they are now living according to the covenant. Being seen by God and seeing God does not, however, lose the sense of the holy other. The center of the holy is a temple. The very heart of the dwelling was the throne of God around and over. And the space surrounded by them was absolutely empty and was called the throne of mercy. The temple was destroyed by the Romans, a terrible catastrophe for the Jewish people that it remembered through many different signs. But God's abiding with God's people was not destroyed and the destruction of God's dwelling place in Jerusalem has already occurred once before the time of Babylonians. And for us who believe in God's presence of Jesus, the two texts in Exodus that we are looking for are very valid and alive for us. As the Gospel of John says, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. When I chose these two texts from the book of Exodus, I immediately also thought of the verse from John's gospel, God's presence in the cloud, God's word that is God, now dwells abide in the human person of Jesus as such among us. And if we remember the transfiguration of Jesus, we again find the cloud, the symbol of God's presence. And Peter, James, and John are terrified. But at the same time, Peter wants to build huts in order to keep the presence. And the presence of God, so unique in the persons of Jesus, is not limited to him. Paul reminds the community in Corinth, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you love from God? Oh, one more page. And what does all this mean for us that we are gathered here together? It said earlier that the Bible events in the past, God's working in the past always has to do with the present as well, but not only the present. What God has done and continues to do also points out to the future, gives hope to the future. Jewish tradition believes that the dwelling place of God the city of Jerusalem in the word to come will stretch as far as Damascus, thus given everyone space. And the entire Bible ends by speaking once again of God's dwelling place among humankind. In the book of Revelation, we are told, in the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned by her husband. And one of his bride's characteristics is described with these words. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple in the Lord of God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God, the nation will walk by the light. And in that chapter it says, are we not preparing this Jerusalem when we meet one another here? in the depths of communication face to face. So the end of this is, come Holy Spirit. In the book of Revelation, it says, come Lord Jesus. And instead of a prayer, I'm going to read Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you, because the earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us the blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. I will thank my friend and we tell her it went okay. <laughs>
Brian? I suggest that we get a card that we can sign. Okay. And you can send it to her. Wonderful. I saw her the last time in 95, and her sister lives in Germany, and I will see her sister when I go in October. <laughs> so now we have a hymn. What kind of a hymn? stand if you're able to. We'll say the Apostle Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.
Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You be seated. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in your baptism covenant to strive for justice and peace all over the earth. Use our deserved gift and service to the whole people of God, merciful God. Receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures, protect the habitats of fish and birds, repair the damaged neglect and natural disasters that all creation may thrive. Merciful God. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty. Merciful God. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God. You call us a delight on the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, our minds, our spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God. Now you can say your prayer out loud or in silence. I pray for my friend in Tuolumne, who is now on hospice. She was six weeks in Stanford Hospital, and now she's home to die in her daughter's house. Dear Lord, receive our prayer. Please watch over the Rwanda Lutheran Church Merciful God, generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God. Receive the prayers of your children, O merciful God, who hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. We now give to God what's first given us. Let us sing the doxology. Please stand.
our duty and joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join them in an ending hymn. And the glory. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table, receive the nourishment for your journey.
The Congregational Mountain Church and Faith Lutheran have invited our congregation to a hymn thing and a potluck. This will be done on Saturday, September 24th, and it will be held at Faith Lutheran in Murphy's, 3.30 to 4.30, followed by potluck. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. We also can carpool, so you should have a good time together with other churches. We appreciate our team today, Sandy Hawk, Clyde Davis, Brian, Sandy, and Nancy Bliss, and thanks Jim for singing. And some other bit of, not, not bit, huge amount of technology for which we're always thankful and sometimes we forget because we've gotten so used to it, is that we have a camera and a projector and all of this set up and the screens and everything that helps us as we worship together and that we are able then to send this worship by the magic of electronics to people in their homes or to record DVDs for those of people who can't worship with us. And we are just always grateful for that. We just sometimes don't mention it. So thanks to all of you who helped us acquire this, set it up, figure out which wire to put where, and uh, the people that operate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll say a word, Barbara. Um, the choir practiced here today and uh, they will be singing in church next Sunday, and we are also going to practice at 10 o'clock. If any of you would like to join us for that practice and uh, performance next Sunday, why, come and sing with us at 10 o'clock. You're all welcome. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and every day. Amen. There is a hymn, standing hymn, God who made heaven and earth. 